here today to talk about boat refrigeration. Ever since we bought the boat, our refrigeration system has never just been like totally spot on. It would work sometimes, we'd lose some Freon, we'd have to refill it, it'd work again, and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Not good. We think this is a good unit, this is our old Seafrost unit, but the time has come. So let's take apart the Seafrost, see what's inside, and then also take a look at the isotherm that we're going to replace it with and see what the differences are. All right, this is the inside of our Seafrost BD50 unit. You can see it has a BD50 compressor. This is a digital controller that's on the side of the compressor. You've got a fan that's bringing in air and forcing it through over the compressor. And then if we spin this around, it blows it out over a condenser, which is like a radiator right over here on the back. So we don't quite know why the Seafrost went out on us. We've, we've actually liked it. Uh, it. On power, it's not too bad. It draws about five amps. The compressors themselves are basically the same, which you'll see in just a moment over here. We think that the problem was not with the unit itself. The unit actually is fine. It works, it runs, it turns on and off, which is excellent. The problem we think is either inside of some of these connectors or inside of the valves themselves. If we take a really close look in here, you'll see the inside of that valve. That's a small little Presta valve, just like in a, in a bicycle. These valves can go bad over time and possibly leak Freon out these two places right here. So we think that's a possible place where we're having one of our leaks. The other possible place that we're having our leaks is right here, but not specifically at these connectors. These are nice quick connects. There are also swage fittings that run from the back of our boat up to the middle where the refrigeration is. And we think that is where a lot of the problem is. We did find some leaks there. We do think that that's how some air got into the system. Over time, we've refilled it continuously with more and more R134 refrigerant. However, the problem is, is that every time you refill it and then every time it leaks, more and more air and condensation gets drawn into the system. So over time, we've built up a lot of water and, and condensation and just a few drops in this system can spell the end of your cold beer. So that's it, Seafrost BD50 out with the old, in with the new. This beauty right here is an Isotherm 2013 boat refrigeration system. It uses the exact same uh, compressor, which is the BD50. However, it's a little bit more compact. It has a much smaller condensing unit. It's gonna draw air over the condensing unit, over the compressor, and then off into the back. So, what's the difference between this and our Seafrost? We're hoping to get a little bit better performance out of this puppy right here. Why? Well, it comes down to this, which is the digital controller. This, we think, number one, is going to allow our refrigeration system to work a little bit more efficiently. We've heard talk that we can cut it down to about a 2.5 amp draw with this system on average, compared to a five amp draw with the Seafrost on average. So let's take a look and put these guys side by side and understand what the differences are. All right, now that we've got these side by side, here's your Seafrost, here's your isotherm, we can really start to see the difference in the size of the two units. The Seafrost has a covering, which this covering is designed to control the airflow through the unit. And I'm going to tell you in a second why I think that the airflow control is one of the reasons that the isotherm may be able to be just a little bit more efficient now versus this older generation. I don't know for sure. I'm not a refrigeration scientist. I'm not making any claims here. I'm just making a hypothesis from visually what I can see. I'd love to hear from you refrigeration experts down below in the comments. I'd really like to learn more on this. It's a super interesting topic. So let's delve in a little bit more to what my thoughts are as to why I think that this may work a little bit more efficiently. So if we go ahead and pull the cover off, what we can see is we've got a really large condensing unit. 
And if we, we kind of go side by side here, I'm gonna flip this guy around. As you can see, the condensing unit right here is huge. It's, a, it's about double the size of this condensing unit. The difference is, I think, in the airflow. This brings in air through the side in here with the fan, brings it in, basically kind of swirls it around the compressor. The air gets a little bit warmer because of the compressor and because it's all hidden inside of this box. So there has to be some heat that's trapping up in there. So after the air comes in here, it naturally flows out the side. The issue that I see here with this is that the condensing unit is, not, is at the very last part of the airflow. So the air gets warmed before it hits these plates and these fins. Does that make a difference? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Let's slide in this unit. So it's gonna be hard to see, but this is your condensing unit right back here. It's tucked in, it has less fins, and it is much, much smaller, at least half the size. The difference is that our air is flowing directly in here and directly over the condenser. So I'm not sure if this makes a difference, and we hope that the claims of lower amp draw and more efficiency with this unit actually come true. Let's take a look at another difference between the isotherm and the Seafrost. Right off the bat, you start to notice that the lines are different. I'm gonna show you this. You see the size and, and the thickness of the lines coming off of the isotherm. And let's slide the Seafrost back over and look at the size of these. They're huge in comparison. I'm not sure if this makes a difference. It seems like it would make a difference in the amount or volume of refrigerant that you would need. I don't know what it does for efficiency. Again, I'd love to hear more from the experts. One more difference that I noticed, the last big difference is right here. I don't know if you guys can see this right here. You zoom right in. This right here is a water filter. And what it does is it stops water that may be in here from the manufacturing process and doesn't allow it to move into the capillary system of the evaporator. So we can see that the isotherm has this water, water vapor filter in here. We slide back here. There is none on this unit. So I'm not sure if that makes a big difference, but hopefully we're gonna get a little bit better performance and a little bit more reliability out of the system. Once again, I have nothing against this unit. This unit, I think, has served the boat very well. The boat itself is 20 years old. I think this is one of their earlier and original units. I'm not quite sure how to read any date codes on, the, on, on this compressor. When it did work, it worked just fine and it drew anywhere between five and six amps during its cycle. So to give you an idea, every time it turned on, it would draw five amps and it would run maybe about two thirds of an hour. But we have quite a big fridge. Our refrigerator is almost 10 cubic feet. So that is a large fridge, especially in the tropics. So we think it ran a reasonable amount of time. Uh, we've heard we can become a little bit more efficient. This new unit, the isotherm, is supposed to only draw about two and a half amps and the reason why is due to its controllers. It has a little bit different and more modern controller programming. And when used in conjunction with these digital controllers and digital thermostats, it's supposed to be able to control the compressor speed and modulate the temperature better through this digital system inside of the refrigeration box. So we'll see if that actually pans out. One other big difference between these two units is the enclosure of the units and the space that they take up. The Seafrost unit is about two inches longer in length. I would say without measuring, the Seafrost unit is quite a bit wider, maybe about two to three inches wider than this unit. So we can, in the same cubic footage, we can probably almost fit two of these compressors in the space of one. The Isotherm ITC is the new version of Isotherm's digital controller. As you can see, it has a digital temperature readout and also the ability to control different functions with an LCD screen. It also gives you options to turn the power off and turn to different power settings, as well as turn the temperature of the fridge up and down in one degree increments. We think that's huge.
All right, guys, let's get to it and start putting this puppy in the boat. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support our production efforts, please join our crew on Patreon. You can find out more about us and our adventures at our website.